Um, I'm Chris Harley. My home department is <laughs> zoology. I'm also associated with the Biodiversity Research Center. And I'm an ecologist, and I'm really interested in the effects of climate change on coastal ecosystems. And I work pr primarily on rocky shores. And there's a few reasons for that. One is that unlike tuna, um, mussels are easy to count and easy to see exactly when they die. And they're also easy to bring into the lab. Um, so on rocky shores, things tend to live quite close to their thermal tolerance limits, for example. And so when something goes wrong, it can go spectacularly wrong, and you can see it right before your eyes. There's also lots of really strong biological interactions on rocky shores, as elsewhere, but they're, they're a little bit easier to sort of manipulate and interpret. So the anemone is green partly because of a mutualism with endosymbiotic algae. There's little crusts slowly but fiercely competing for space down at the bottom of this tide pool. The urchins are grazing off everything except for the crust. So all of these trophic interactions, competitive interactions, you know, parasitism, all these things are happening. And when you combine those physical stresses with the biological interactions, you get some really striking patterns. And it can be one, the other, or both that drives change through time. So just a quick um, example that's local. This is a picture over on um, a, a shore in West Vancouver near Lighthouse Park. And the mussel bed there exists in a zone, uh, you, will, you will probably have guessed that if the mussels get too high, they, they cook. If they get too low, they get eaten by sea stars. And so if you were going to guess how things were changing in West Vancouver through time, you might say, well, yeah, it's getting warmer, maybe that's it. But it turns out that salinity is a lot more important. So after a big snow year and a lot of runoff from the freezer, the sea stars hate that, and they all disappear from the system. The mussels are thrilled, and they take over everything. But a few years later, there was very little snow, very little runoff. It was salty. The sea stars rejoiced, and they ate almost every single mussel on that rock. And then as you look through um, various different years, you can see the mussel bed sort of expanding and contracting, depending on what the sea stars are doing. So that's just sort of one vignette of how species interactions can really control what's happening in the system. So now we're trying to puzzle out, well, maybe what are, are there longer term changes through time? So every once in a while, you get lucky and meet people who you can talk to. Um, this is up at Roberts Creek on the Central Coast, and, and uh, uh, Gord Sluggett was uh, kind enough to send me this picture of he and his sister and some cousin climbing the rock in the 50s. And it has been getting steadily saltier through time, and they climb back up there now with a ladder. Um, and the, the muscle beds have been kind of consumed up this from below. So you can start to see some of these longer term trends too. Um, and in addition to changes in salinity, we're interested in temperature and ocean acidification and lots of different variables, and um, not just single impacts, but, but multivariate impacts. And it starts to get pretty complicated because you've got you know, one suite of consumers eating, eating seaweeds, you've got another set of filter feeders eating plankton, all those things are getting eaten by predators. There's way more species that I've left off of these slides. And so trying to pick out where the effects are going to fall, for example, ocean acidification tends to affect calcified things. So maybe that middle trophic level is the most vulnerable. Um, those are the sorts of things we're trying to figure out. Uh, I just want to point out that I have a really wonderful group of students, uh, uh, at least one of them is in the room. And uh, we also have some upcoming uh, funding grants to expand in some, some different directions, looking at collaborations with aquaculture on how well oysters are doing in the Strait of Georgia, as well as uh, some more pure ecological questions involving multiple specialty taking points. And I don't think I even have to hug myself. <laughs>